So today I'm going to address one of the frequently asked questions about NLP practitioner training. Often people say to me, I'm thinking about doing NLP practitioner, I've had a look around at various different courses. Why are they all so different from each other? Great question. Some of the differences that you'll find if you go and research this is that they can be different in terms of length. They can also be different in terms of who um, accredits the, cert the cert certificates at the end of the day. And of course, they will be different because they're different trainers and different trainers put emphasis in different places. You'd expect that. So the main things really are the examining bodies and how long the course is and how it's structured. So there are a few standards about how NLP practitioner training is put together, but fundamentally it's an unregulated field. And so there isn't anything to prevent anybody from setting themselves up to say, I'm a trainer of NLP, I'm going to run a practitioner training, come and do it with me. And they're allowed to do that in most countries in the world, however they see fit. So the, the big issue really comes from the fact that we are unregulated. Now, if you go back in time, go back to the history of NLP, there was a convention in the early days that most of the people who were learning NLP were therapists and counsellors and people who worked in mental health. So the idea of a practitioner was that you were someone who would use the NLP techniques um, with patients. And so it was felt appropriate that this should be uh, a detailed training process that people should be properly examined and certified to, to use these techniques rather than simply allowing people to just go off and do whatever they saw fit. And I think that's fair enough. But then there came a point where NLP branched out and was no longer just the province of mental health professionals, but started to be used in business and in other areas of life as well. And as lots of people who wanted to use NLP for different purposes started to get involved, there were questions about, well, do we really need to do a 20-day programme? Do we really need this rigorous examination process? Is that absolutely necessary? And for some people, the answer was, no, not really. And for others, the answer was, yes, absolutely. Also, there was a question about, well, 20 days, that's a long time, but hey, we know about modelling. We know how to find out the essence of somebody's skill and teach it to somebody much more quickly. So how about if we use some of those principles to shorten the amount of training? Wouldn't that be a great idea? So other people went off and pursued that idea. So what you find now is that there are people like myself who still run a 20-day NLP practitioner programme. If you enrol on my course, all you have to do is clear the dates in your diary and turn up on the appointed time. You don't have to do any pre-course work, you don't have to allow time for homework, you just have to show up. And some people really like that. The biggest alternative to that is what's often known as an accelerated format. And the way that that works is that the actual workshop time will be much shorter, somewhere between 5 and 15 days. I think the average is about 7 or 8. And what happens with that is that you'll be given a lot of self-study material to work with beforehand. So that could be videos, it could be audio, there'll probably be a book or two to read. And usually there'll be some kind of knowledge test for you to complete before you turn up to the workshop. Now for some people, this works really well. And if you're a, a good self-directed learner, you probably quite like the idea of getting all the information beforehand so that you can get the facts and the information and then come along to a workshop and learn how to put it into practice. That's great. So why have I not done that? Well, I've chosen not to go down that route because a lot of the people that I work with are very busy. And my concern is that if I send somebody, I don't know, 20, 30 hours of audio to listen to or videos to watch, plus some books to read, plus a knowledge test to do, there is a danger that they won't actually find time to do it. With the best will in the world, if you've got a busy life, sometimes things like that get squeezed. And especially if you have the kind of personality where you're always looking after everybody else and your own agenda keeps slipping down to the bottom of the priority list. So my concern is that I might have you know, in a group of 12 people, I might have two or three people who haven't actually been able to do all the pre-course work before they turn up. Now, why is that a problem? Well, they're not going to be in a good state to learn. So that probably means they won't get the best out of the training that they're there to attend. It probably also means it slightly diminishes the experience for other people in the group because those people are probably going to ask different questions. Or maybe they won't ask any questions at all because they don't want to reveal the fact that they didn't have time to do all the reading beforehand. 
But either way, they're going to behave differently than someone who has done all the reading beforehand and gone through all the process. So I think it creates a kind of inequality within the group. And that makes it more difficult for me to be certain that I can get everybody up to the required standard by the end of the training. So I've chosen not to do that. Now, I totally respect people who do do it. I know that it works really well for certain individuals. But for me, I've never been certain that I could make it work for everybody who came to me. So I've stuck with the format where all you have to do is turn up and participate in the workshop. There is something else for me as well, though, which is that a lot of NLP is about interacting with other people successfully. So I think spending as much time as possible doing that while you're learning the subject has got to be a good thing. So those are the two main things that you'll find in terms of length. You'll find an accelerated format, which is probably seven or eight days plus pre-study, and then you'll get a full-length programme, which is about 20 days. You will also, if you go and search on the internet, find that there are people who are offering courses of only two or three days length that they call an NLP practitioner course. Well, that's their prerogative. Fundamentally, you're going to get what you pay for here. So if you're paying for two days of training, it stands to reason that you're going to learn a lot less than if you're paying for 20. And also, NLP is really about skills. It's not just about information. It's about learning how to do it. So in a full-length program, you get lots of opportunity to practice, to find out what works, to get feedback, and actually in the moment when you get the feedback, to put that into practice and do something different. On the two-day course, at best, you're going to get the chance to do things once or maybe see them done. But you're certainly not going to get the same degree of learning as you would on a much longer course. But, you know, if that's what you want, if all you want is a certificate that says you're a practitioner, well, why not? But I think most people want to do NLP because they actually want to learn to do it. That's my prejudice anyway. So my advice would be, if you're thinking about taking an NLP practitioner course, just be really clear about what you're getting and what the purpose of the programme is as far as the trainers are concerned. That way you can make a decision and you can get a course that's really going to work for you. Obviously, I'd love to see you come to mine, but I know that what I do isn't for everyone. If it is for you, then please take the opportunity to have a look at what we've got available. And if you have more questions, get in touch.